On May the 6th, um, I will do my last concert as chief conductor of the Yerle Symphony Orchestra. You know, after 10 years working with, with the orchestra, this is uh, my final concert, which, you know, in some occasions this will be a sad moment, but actually we want to celebrate and we want to make this a very uh, happy occasion for many reasons. One of the reasons is because although I will stop being the chief conductor of the orchestra, I have lots of plans about uh, our, our collaborations together. We are going to go on tour next year to the UK together for 10 concerts. We have lots of plans for the future. So there is a future for the orchestra and for me together. 10 years. Um, you know, it has been an amazing time. But as I said before, we want to celebrate this occasion with music from my country, Spanish music. We are going to make this a Spanish fiesta. And for that, we are going to have three composers, the most iconic Spanish composers, Manuel de Falla, Enrique Granados, and Joaquín Turina. And to start the concert and to finish the concert, we will have amazing Spanish music written by French composer Maurice Rabel. The first piece will be Rabel Rhapsody Español, which actually, I think this is one of the best Spanish pieces <laughs> written by a foreigner, in this case by a Frenchman, Ravel. It is the most beautiful piece. You know what I love about the Rhapsody Espanol is, is the colors, is, the, is the, 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 the light of this piece. You know, the beginning with the violins making these beautiful, uh, beautiful sounds, almost like a new day is starting. It's absolutely beautiful piece. I cannot wait to play this piece with the Yevle Symphony Orchestra. Then we will do Manuel de Falla, a three-cornet hat, El Sombrero de Tres Picos. And this was uh, a music written for a ballet. This was commissioned by the Aguilev for the ballets Rus that at that time they were in Paris. I mean, I would like to be in Paris at that time. The premiere of this piece, of this ballet, the sets were done by Pablo Picasso. So can you imagine music by the Falla, the ballet Russe, and then Picasso? He he did even the, the he painted the the curtain for the for the theater. So it's incredible. They work together. What amazing talented people being together in one piece. In the second half, we will start with Turina, Danzas Fantásticas, which this is translates something like fantastic dances. And it was written also in 1919, the same, the same year as the Three Cornet Hat. Then before we finish with a bang with the Rabel Bolero, which is again one of these amazing pieces using Spanish rhythm, although written by a Frenchman, then in between Turina and Rabel, we will play a short piece by Granados, which is the intermezzo from the opera Goyescas. This was the last, uh, the last piece he, he, he wrote before he died, unfortunately, on his way back from the premiere in New York of this uh, opera, Goyescas. Uh, uh, Granados was on a boat on his way back to Spain and he, the boat was um, torpedoed by a German submarine and, and he died. So that was a, a really, really sad, uh, occasion, but in general, this concert will be a happy uh, fiesta, and I really, really uh, would like to encourage you to join us and to have fun together with myself, Jaime Martin, and the Jevle Symphony Orchestra. I still remember my first visit to Jevle. My first uh, visit to, to this amazing orchestra. Re remember looking looking in the map, <laughs> looking at the map. So where is Yeble? You know, I had to arrive to Arlanda, take a train, arrived here. I remember the first um, rehearsal. Um, I was doing Mendelssohn Symphony Number no. Five Reformation, and in the same program. 
I did in a piano concerto by Tobias Bostrom, which was a fantastic piece. And I think we played the overture by Weber, the Freisuits overture. And it was the most wonderful experience. I remember the first, uh, the first rehearsal I saw an orchestra in a foreign country, in a country, you know, I think that was my first visit to Sweden ever. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I am Spanish. And in Spain, uh, we always talk about the Nordic countries as a cold, cold place or cool people, or maybe very serious or not, not very warm. And I have to say that uh, my first encounter with this country, with this city, with this orchestra was completely the opposite. I found, I found lots of warmth. I found um, an orchestra willing to work. I found an orchestra incredibly flexible and incredibly friendly. Immediately they felt me, uh, they made me feel at home. Uh, it was it was incredible, and I came this first visit. I just was invited to do a concert as a guest conductor. So of course I didn't I didn't um, uh, imagine that the future was going to bring us together. I remember that after the concert, I went to my dressing room to to change, and you know I took my time. I was uh, tired, and so I was taking putting my normal clothes. So it took, I think I remember it took quite long to come out of my dressing room. And then suddenly I opened the door of my dressing room to go out for dinner. We were going to have dinner in the restaurant here in the foyer of the concert hall. I opened the door and then in the corridor outside my dressing room, there was a, a queue of people, uh, musicians from the orchestra waiting to, to say hello and to say thank you to me which it was amazing because I really took quite a lot, probably 10 minutes uh, to change. And they were still there waiting, which that was incredibly, that was incredibly impressive. I was very touched by that. You know, it was a very, it's not often that you get the, the, the musicians being so uh, engaged or so warm in this particular case. I was really moved then um, during dinner, uh, I remember Aina was <laughs> asking me, said, well, you know, um, I think I've been talking uh, to people in the orchestra and they would like for you to be back next year. But the only opportunity we have next year, the only week free is this week in May. Anyway, I look at my diary and that week in May I was busy. So I was not available. And then... Um, I said, sorry, I am, I am not available. Anyway, next morning, I took my train to go back to Arlanda, and on the train, it's a phone call. So it's Aina on the phone saying, are you sure you are busy that week? Can you, can you find a way, maybe? Because we would really like to see you next year. I said, well, Aina, I'm sorry, I told you I am busy. I arrived to the airport in Arlanda, and once I went through check-in and security, another phone call, Aina. Uh, are you sure you cannot find a way to to be free? Um, and say, oh, well, you know, really, I mean, thank you very much for the interest, but I, I, I'm busy, you know. Okay, I arrive home in London, phone call, guess from who? From Ainer. Um, and then they say, I mean, say, come on, I mean, what's going on? I mean, you, this is the fourth time you call me today. And then he said, you know, we are looking for a principal conductor, for a chief conductor. And, and really the orchestra would love to, to see you again uh, as soon as possible, you know, and, and well, well, anyway, so in the end, just to make the, the story <laughs> shorter, I, I had engagement, I, ha I was doing some new music. And eventually I called the people organizing this and said, look, I got a phone call from, I mean, uh, it's this orchestra in Sweden. They would like me to, to be free exactly the week when, when we are doing these concerts. And 
you know, before I say no to them, definitely, I would like to double check that everything is in place. And then the answer from these people in Spain was, oh, how good you are calling. We are going to call you because something has happened. And actually, we have to move the dates. Are you free the week before to do this tour in Spain? And I thought, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I am free now <laughs> to do it. But, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I could have said no to Yevle, you know, because I was busy. But it makes you realize that sometimes it's worth trying. So I, I just called Spain and then they did ask, oh, you know, please, could you, can we move the dates? Which I was incredibly happy. And in a way, that um, is destiny. You know, I think this was meant to happen. <laughs> and, then, and I really appreciate the insistence of Einar in this particular case. I, I never thought he was heavy with it. He was just doing his job and he was showing to me how uh, interested they were that I came back to the orchestra. So, the following May, <laughs> one year later, I came back to work with the orchestra. I think it was a shorter concert, it was a Thursday concert. And all went very well with the, the rehearsals. We had a, a good concert. And as soon as the concert finished, suddenly I was taking a bow. And suddenly I hear these sounds coming from the orchestra, like trumpets doing ta 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 And then the tam 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 It's a kind of fanfare the orchestra plays when somebody when special occasions and then they start playing when I was taking a bow and I thought what's going on with these people maybe somebody's birthday or why are, why are they doing that and actually the reason they did that is because they they did I learned later they do this kind of fanfare when the orchestra had the moment or a special concert or something that they wanted to celebrate and I thought hmm, well that's that's very, very, I was very impressed <laughs> by that, that they not only show this appreciation to me uh, off the stage or I, I, my dressing room, but in front of their audience, they play the fanfare to celebrate uh, what we all thought was a very exciting concert. So this was, this was the beginning of my, my time with the orchestra. There are so many memories of, um, you know, I think the, what I will always keep f with me about this time with the orchestra is, is the, the individual people in the orchestra. The, all the people in the office, all the, the people in the administration, but it's the musicians of the orchestra. It's my relationship with them, which I, I think has, has made this, uh, these 10 years, so incredibly special. Many of the players of the orchestra, I have been able to meet them in their homes. And, uh, and I, ha I have really appreciated, you know, that they have opened their uh, homes, their families, their, their life um, to me. And as I said earlier, I, they made me feel uh, almost at home you know, in, in a very far away place for me. I will always remember from, you know, I not, not remember, but I will miss the, the, the amazing, how incredibly cold it is in here, which sometimes you hate that, but um, I love it, you know, sometimes, you know, to, to arrive to days like, uh, actually today is not very cold, but when you have, I love these Swedish days of blue sky, the sun, and then freezing cold. I find that so incredibly wonderful. You know, it makes you feel it's fresh and sharp and alive. You know, it's like, it's, uh, it, is, it is wonderful. I even experienced once a real uh, a Swedish sauna, you know, with proper fire in the middle of a lake, with a hole in the ice. Uh, and I couldn't believe how cold it was. I mean, I, I never, I never imagined that uh, I would be happy with no clothes on um, in the middle of minus. I don't know what the temperature was, but actually coming out of the water was a relief. 
<laughs> it was warm to be outside in the incredible cold. Um, the, this uh, sauna experience uh, I had here uh, is something I would definitely, definitely remember forever. But there were few moments in, the, in our relationship together. The Jevle Symphony Orchestra with me that um, were very special. One, one of them was when we made the decision to record our first CD. We were for a long time thinking, okay, what is going to be our calling card? You know, just to show our public, to show our friends, but to show also the world. What is what we do here in Yerle? We thought about lots of different pieces. In the end, we identified uh, Brahms' serenades as, um, as the ideal vehicle to show how happy we were working together. You know, the Brahms' serenades are the most beautiful pieces of music, and they are not so often recorded, or at least not as often as the symphonies. Then we worked very hard to make um, what we thought was a beautiful recording, and it really paid off. I think this this uh, this CD had amazing reviews, had um, had uh, in some places was the uh, CD of the month. Uh, I remember in Holland this was the CD of the month, and because of that. Uh, we were invited the following year to, to perform at the Concertgebouw. But, uh, you know, to see our, our record being uh, reviewed in such a, a positive way from Gramophone magazine in England or from the main uh, newspapers, uh, I think we, we got the Sunday Times to review the, the, our CD. And, you know, for, for all of us, this gave us this extra bit of confidence that we all needed to, to start thinking about the, the future. This first CD, then we continue with our second um, Brahms uh, experiment, that, that was our back, um, our second uh, outing into the Brahms music for CD was the Brahms uh, choral music together with the Eric Erickson uh, chamber choir. And this was the most wonderful music. I mean, I remember being in this hall with this amazing, uh, with this amazing choir. I remember the first time I worked with them. Um, we did a concert here, we did a creation by Haydn. And then I thought, wow, I few times heard anything so beautiful as these people singing. So then that's when we started thinking, ooh, maybe we should try to do a, a recording together. And this Brahms uh, choral music CD became again another uh, success of the orchestra and is something I am so incredibly proud of this recording. Every time Every time I hear the beginning of Shiksa's Lead, this amazingly beautiful piece, uh, you know, this music bring, brings tears to my eyes. And I cannot tell you how uh, lucky I feel I could record this beautiful music with, with my friends and colleagues of this amazing orchestra. Our third um, CD was, again, Brahms, but this was piano quartet orchestrated by, by Schoenberg. And again, this, this was a challenge. This is an incredibly difficult piece, uh, very virtuosic. And once again, the orchestra saw where absolute the level, uh, the level the orchestra could deliver, which I think is completely extraordinary. One of the things that I value and I really appreciate from our years working together is the exploring, the exploration of sound. And even today we've been rehearsing uh, Melcher, Melcher's symphony, but actually when we were re rehearsing the Brahms piano concerto, and I hear the, the, the beautiful sound, the, the orchestra 
can can produce. That makes me uh, makes me realize that uh, all this work we have done together has been really worth it. I think um, it is a very special sound, and for me, sound is um, at the center of of our rehearsal time. Of course, to play together is very important, or uh, what the phrasing or what we are aiming. But I think there is something about sound. Sound uh, defines our voice, defines uh, who we are as a group. And, and I think this exploration of sound, of course, sometimes maybe it's very tedious and, and it's hard work and can be uh, uh, tiring sometimes. I can feel with when I see the faces of uh, of musicians in the orchestra that uh, we all are on the same page in this, and now we are all proud of our sound. I really think it's a very special sound. My son, he he's not a musician, but he loves music, and when he listens to our recordings and he compares to other recordings, I say with respect to all the recordings. I mean, it's not that it's better or worse, or, but he mentions, he, he always, my son mentions the Gievle sound. And, and for me, it's, it's a kind of particular sound. It's, it's a, it is a very yummy and delicious sound. <laughs> and and um, you can almost taste it, you know? It's, it's a, and of course, to, to create the sound of an orchestra, is a question of balancing the voices. You know, it's like putting a bit more weight in one note to make another note lighter or heavier, just to build a chord in a particular way. And, you know, for me, this is my, uh, my goal. It's what I've been always trying with the orchestra. In, in a way, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I think I am a kind of sound hedonist in that sense. You know, I love sound. I don't know why, you know? Maybe, maybe it's because my, I am a musician. Because when I was eight, I went to see a concert. My father took me to a concert. And I was in tears in that concert. You know, when I was eight, I was not in tears because I, I thought the music of Tchaikovsky Symphony Number no. 5 was uh, sadder or happier. No, I was in tears because of the sound. I mean, it was the sound of this. I still remember being in this concert hall when I was eight, and I, I remember the sound of the orchestra. And for me, always, uh, sound has been the, the, the most important thing. Another fantastic uh, memories I will have from these amazing years with this orchestra are the, our tours. You know, I, our first tour, we went to, our first tour together, we went to Korea, we went to China, and you know, on tour is when you have the opportunity not only to play uh, in a different concert hall. You know, we play here in Gevle for our audience. And of course, this is the most important thing. We, we have to, to make our audience excited. We want to uh, fit with music this wonderful city, this wonderful region. But when we play in a different stage, in a different city, in a different country, then we, it pushes all of us to be it pushes because we are insecure. So we don't know the orchestras that normally play in this new concert hall. Are they better than us? Are they worse? Are they, what are they? So it, it somehow, it is like a football team playing away. You know, you are away. So you don't have your fans supporting you. So you have to win them. You have to earn the support of the, of the public. And this is the very exciting thing about being on tour. But, you know, this tour, to China and, and Korea when I'm sure you have footage somewhere of, you know, the people cheering, you know, people standing up after the concerts when after our encores. I mean, it was a huge success. And doing this tour, what we hope is that the success we have abroad or in another country, we can bring, that back, we can bring this success back. 
And what we want is our public in Yeble to feel proud of their orchestra. And I think that's very important. That's a very important function of a tour. I think the tour for, uh, you know, or our audience, when they see that we succeed in another place, I think it's a natural feel that you say, wow, you know, it's our orchestra. And you enjoy it, our orchestra in Shanghai or in Seoul and in all the other venues we played in that tour. But another thing that this tour did to all of us as a group is to bring us closer together. Because, you know, during, uh, during a tour, we have to uh, spend time together. We have to go for a, every evening. We have to find a restaurant or, or, or we even have to find a place to have a drink after the concert because, you know, the, the whole day on tour is very tiring. We have to travel. We have to do rehearsal. We do the concert. Wow, suddenly the concert is finished. We can just enjoy uh, each other's company, have a drink, talk about what happened today and start planning for tomorrow. I think this relationship of being together on tour um, for me was very important because brought us together. I could, there were people I met during the tour or a chance to speak that normally during our normal rehearsals and concerts in, in here in Yevle, normally it's not so much time because here in Yevle, you know, after the rehearsal, people have to go home. They have to go and uh, to their families, to, to their washing up or to their uh, sports or to whatever they people do at home. And um, it was really wonderful to see, um, to be able to, to be together. It was almost like having a party together, but a very professional party because we were doing concerts every day. It was basically having a, 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 I think the audience really felt that, felt that. And I think it's one of the reasons the concerts were so success, successful. I think it's one of the reasons the concerts were so successful. I think the audience realized that we were enjoying being together on the stage. And we were uh, almost um, celebrating our uh, friendship. I mean, maybe it sounds uh, a little bit uh, too sweet or something, but actually I really mean it. I think the, I think the orchestra can project to the, to the audience a kind of energy or, or the feel of how we, how we are at the moment. And uh, during that tour, I have to say that uh, we had a very, very, very happy orchestra. Our second big tour um, was to the UK, and then this was this was an amazing experience for different reasons. This was um, <laughs> this was a tour that uh, was fighting. You know, this this is a tour that happened at the beginning of the pandemic. We we started the tour. In the, in the UK, I think we had like seven or eight concerts. And our first concert was in Leeds. And this is when suddenly people were starting to stay home. They say, ooh, this is the pandemic, this is for real. And the next day we went to Manchester, and I remember in Manchester. The, I think it was a sold out concert, but probably we had only half people in the audience or two thirds. And then that's when we realized that people were afraid and people were starting to feel that big groups were uh, maybe not, uh, not ideal. And I remember that concert in Manchester was very, very special because before the second half, we were performing Sibelius Symphony Number no. 5. I did uh, address the audience and I talked to, to the public and I remember saying to everybody, well, you know, this is a difficult time and we don't really know if this concert was going to happen. We don't know if tomorrow's concert is going to happen, but look, you are here. You came to listen to us and I say, I want to say thank you very much for joining us. When I said that, suddenly somebody from the audience 
very loudly scream, no, thank you for coming to play for us. And then everybody started clapping in the orchestra. I saw people in the orchestra with tears in their eyes. So it was, it was a moment that, that we all felt, oh, this, this is definitely an extraordinary moment, you know? When I never had a situation when suddenly you get such interaction from the audience. So we are thanking the audience for coming to the concert. The audience is thanking us for traveling to perform for them. And, you know, every day, every concert we played, we played in Cheltenham, then we played in London, we played in Cambridge. And then by the time we arrive to the concert in Edinburgh, uh, the, the last day, it, it, it was, you know, I remember we had two Danish musicians that had to leave the day before. They could not do the concert because Denmark was going to be closed that day. So if they didn't go now, then they, they, might, they didn't know for how long they might not be able to go home. So it was completely unbelievable. I remember we did the concert, which actually was amazing. The soloist for that tour was Victoria Mulova, and she was a dream to work with. I mean, she played so beautifully. And I remember that uh, we did the concert in Edinburgh, and then the, the next day uh, I flew back to London, and the orchestra flew um, back to Stockholm. I saw from my plane, I could see the plane where the orchestra, they were all there. I got a, a message from Einar uh, uh, saying, uh, look, I cannot believe it. We are all on the plane the, and the plane is going to leave. It's going to go to Sweden now. Because at that time, nobody was sure. I mean, pl flights were canceled. It was, it, it was incredible time. And, but look, we, we managed to do that. Then, of course, this was March. And then the, the, the whole world stopped. Concerts uh, stopped. But, you know, I am very happy to say that the first contact I had with an orchestra was here in Yevle. That was the, uh, we did a um, stream concert. We did Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 2. And this was in May. It was only a few months. Um, into the lockdown and this is when we started with this new experiment how we need to continue we need to play for our audience we cannot stop you know we have to maybe we cannot be together in the same room maybe you cannot come to the hall maybe we cannot go to your homes maybe we, we cannot have hugs we cannot talk we have to have masks whatever but we thought we have to do what we can to, in a safe way, of course, with, uh, I remember the stage at that time, we were, <laughs> we had to do incredible things to put the orchestra uh, with two and a half meters separation. So we could not have the full orchestra, but actually we could have a reasonable amount of people to start doing our new experiment and with our in-house and with the talented <laughs> people in all this amazing concert hall, we managed to produce our own videos of um, uh, streaming concerts. And this was an amazing thing. This was something that we had to create for not from nothing. And I think we were one of the first orchestras doing this. I mean, at the time when, um, you know, everything was, uh, everybody was waiting for each other. What's, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? So in a way, in a way, all these experiences we had during the pandemic, and, and, and I think the pandemic made us, um, we had to put our game together in a, in a major way. And actually, we had to be flexible. We had to be creative. And I think the pandemic showed us that actually this, the orchestra is a really a grown up organization. And I think that was very clear for me. And in a way, out of the um, negative parts of these months, I think we have uh, taken some positive experiences. Um, 
you know, I, the way now we can record concerts and and this is something we have learned together and, and we can use for the, uh, for the future. And flexibility. I think flexibility is another, another thing that uh, I think has been very important. You know, pre-pandemic, pre uh, things had to be organized, you know, two years in advance. And, but now we have to be very flexible. Things can change next week and we have to change the program, we have to change the soloist, we have to change ideas and I think that has been very refreshing and in a way this makes um, everybody's uh, mind and everybody's brain to uh, up to be on overdrive almost. I mean we had to whoa, uh, find solutions very quickly and I think this has been very good. The soloists the orchestra has worked with over the years. I wish I could have thought a little bit more about that I don't forget names, but you know, now, just immediately thinking about uh, this week, we, we are going to be working with uh, Kirill Gerstein, that it is a fantastic pianist I wanted to work with for, for a long time. But, uh, you know, we go back and last December, we were working with Janine Janssen. And this is the second time she came to the orchestra. This was a wonderful, wonderful experience Victoria Mulova, Nemanja Radulovic, we had Ray Chan. Um, I was thinking now when we did the Brahms Piano Concerto last time with Gabriela Montero, we have played uh, with Denis Kotsukin uh, and Sophie Van Otter. I remember when we played with Anne Sophie Van Otter. Uh, this was one of the most wonderful uh, events because I've been a fan of Anne Sophie all my life. You know, I used to, I used to, when I was a flute player and I was the flute professor at the Royal College of Music in London, um, every new student I had every, each year, the first thing before I gave them my first lesson, they had to listen to one song. I, I had, I always put the, the headphones and say, listen to this. And this was a song uh, by Kurvail, sung by Anne-Sophie Van Otter. And the reason I played always to all my students this song is because for me this was the ideal, uh, the ideal way of phrasing, the ideal way, the ideal way of using vibrato. And in a way, I was telling my students, "Look, this is what I am aiming for as a flute player. If you don't like it, then find another teacher, because this is what I like." And for me. I could, the best way I could explain to my students what was my aim is to show them how Anne Sophie Van Otter sang this Kurvile song. So during my flute life as a flute player, I worked with Anne Sophie in different occasions. But uh, the first time I worked with her as a conductor was here in, uh, in Yevle, and this was wonderful. She was fantastic, and luckily, uh, she, she felt very comfortable working with us and then she came the following year. We did uh, Berlioz Nuit de Te with her the following time and our relationship grew so much that then I took her with me to Los Angeles to do the opening concert of my new relationship as a music director of the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra. She was with me in the opening concert. So. Uh, oh, for me, this, uh, uh, of course, this relationship started here in Yevle. And um, uh, we are now this uh, in March. In May, I will do the closing concert of the, my season with the National Symphony Orchestra of Ireland. Uh, and of course, Anne Sophie Van Otter will be the soloist for that occasion also. She's going to do songs by Schubert and Mahler. And, you know, uh, it's so nice when a new relationship that started here in Yevle, then, uh, you know, I can keep it in different places. Other soloists, I mean, you know, Francois Lele. I did the Strauss solo concerto with Francois. And, this was absolutely incredible. I remember some of the singers we had. Um, uh, we had wonderful, uh, wonderful singers. I remember Mahler III, then we did the uh, Brahms. 
uh, Requiem, things that we have done so many pieces together. We have done so many new, so much, so many new pieces, so many premieres. And I think this is something I am really proud of, um, of, of the responsibility, actually, the orchestra has had with, um, with new, new creators, new music, um, younger generations of, of composers that will be the great composers of the, of the future, absolutely no doubt. But, you know, I mean, to, to resume uh, 10 years of excitement, 10 years of experiences together, in, to resume these 10 years in a few minutes is, is very difficult. But, you know, uh, I was saying uh, earlier, in May, I am doing my last concert as a chief conductor of the Jeble Symphony Orchestra. But we know, I know, and the orchestra knows, this will not be our last concert together. We have already, we are very actively planning, not just for the next year, we are doing, we are continuing some of the recordings that we have to finish together, but we are doing a big UK tour of 10 concerts. I think this is a sign that there is life after the official title of Chief Conductor is finished. So I am committed to to be together with the orchestra in the future, but we are planning beyond that. So the years to come, we have uh, wonderful projects together. In a way, my heart will always be with the orchestra. You know, this is the, this is, this was my first orchestra. Uh, my first job as a chief conductor of an orchestra was with your orchestra, with Yevle Symphony Orchestra. It will always have a special place in my heart. Thank you.